But I stop by to tell you that she worshipped the true God of Israel, but she was in the captive of the commander of the army, Naaman. So she's serving Naaman's wife. She was made a slave after being taken from the comfort of your home and she was made very, very uncomfortable. This maid had a big problem. But the maid's problem served a purpose. Naaman kept this secret of leprosy for a long while because if the Assyrian host knew Naaman was a leper, they would have gotten rid of Naaman. So Naaman hiding behind all of his uh, tapestry, all of his, his uh, army clothes, he's hiding behind all those masks that he's wearing so that folks will not recognize that Naaman was a leper. But when Naaman was finished fighting, Naaman had to go home and deal with his problem of leprosy. Leprosy will cause people to send you in a place where all the lepers and all those who have different kinds of sickness that they had no cure for, they would send them to that place. Naaman was without pharmaceutical needs. He was without hospitals. He didn't have a health center to go to. Naaman had a big problem and was hoping that he can get someone to help him solve it. The Bible tells us that Naaman would go home and he would undress himself. And in undressing, of course, the Bible didn't say that, but I'm just saying that he's uh, undressing himself and he has to look at the state of his flesh, deteriorating. And if you know leprosy well, leprosy is going to cause all of your fingers to drop off and leave you with stump it will take all your toes off and leave you with stump it will take off your nose and just leave you with a bridge it will take off your lips and leave you with a permanent grin amen. <laughs> i don't think you want to say amen to that <laughs> naaman had leprosy and the leprosy was giving naaman some problems but the only person who would have been able to see his leprosy would have been his wife and the little maid. You know, when Naaman would look time and time of his discomfort of being a leper, he, would be, he, he wants to get rid of his leprosy, but he just doesn't know what to do and how to get rid of his leprosy he can and you know sometimes a man would be wondering how can a man be so successful in life he can be beating so many people but there's this one little thing that is just beating him up but I stop by to tell you just like Naaman was who's hiding behind all of his clothes and everything some of us as well when we go home people does not know what you and I are dealing with we may not have leprosy, but we may have a certain kind of leper that causes you to be very uncomfortable. Yeah. Maybe it's the family problem, or maybe it's the wife problem, or the husband problem, but somebody has issues that they are dealing with. But I stop by to tell you that your problem serves a purpose. Yes. We want to know what is the purpose for Naaman being a leper and taking captive the guard. Now, I stopped by to let you know that Naaman took the captive against the woman, the maid captive against her will, but it was not against God's will. But it was against her will. Because God will do what he has to do when he has to do it. And he will use whoever, whenever, because he's still God. Yeah. 
And sometimes we just got to take our time when God is working and work for us that we just need to be patient and just look at what God is doing. Don't try to interrupt and get involved and spoil the thing. Just, just stay quiet and see what God is doing. So here we have a situation with two captives. We have the woman being captured, captured by captive by uh, a captive of Naaman, and then we have Naaman himself being a captive by leprosy. Two individuals seeing the same problem and two individuals are dealing with the same issue. What is real power? Real power is what you do when you have an advantage. Because the woman is now saying if there is a prophet in Israel, he is going to get rid of Naaman's leper. But the woman is now placed in a, a situation where she can tell the maid, in fact tell Naaman's wife, that she knows about the prophet. And then she can also stay quiet and allow her captor to die in his state. Sometimes when people do us, if they bounce their feet or if they bounce their car, sometimes we turn to the wall and laugh because it's good for them mm. but this woman had an advantage because she could have allowed Naaman to rot away and then most likely be able to be restored back to her people but she did not do that the woman decided that i am going i'm going to talk to his wife and let her know that there is a prophet. Look at verse number 3. And she says unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover his, him of his leprosy. And one went out and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. The little maid knows a prophet. And this prophet is able to recover this man of his leprosy she is in a position where she can either deny telling her but she decided that she is going to tell Naaman so that he can get rid of the problem that he's having you will have to go to some people that you don't necessarily like people who might want to do you harm but sometimes we need to be just who God wants us to be Christians and not look to take vengeance for ourselves but instead of taking vengeance the very people that has put you in prison is the very people that sometimes God is using you to help the very people who don't like you many of the times sometimes God is using you and you know if we get angry with the very people that don't like us it is difficult for us to save them because we would, know, would not know what we should say to them because we have already discredited them. We don't want to have nothing to do with them because as far as we are concerned, they are bad seed. We don't want to deal with, with, with bad seed. But I just want to let you know that this woman was in a situation where she just had what is called sympathy for the man who had her as a prisoner still showing sympathy although she's a captive she's still showing sympathy i wish we had two or three christians tonight who would say that uh, i will still have sympathy although he has done me wrong yeah. i will still have sympathy because it's not about me it's all about god but sometimes it's the other way around but the bible says that naaman went to his boss so he went to the wrong source and the bible says from verse number five verse number four it says and one went into and told the lord saying thus said the male that is of the land of israel and the king of syria said go to go and i will send a letter unto the king of israel and he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment and he brought the, the letter to the king of israel saying now when this letter is come unto thee behold i have therewith sent naaman my servant to, to thee that thou mayest recover him of his leper 
The Bible says that the, this letter was taken to the king of Assyria, but the Bible is also letting us know that the king is very, very upset. Look at verse number uh, seven. Well, and it came to pass when the king of Israel who had read the letter, then he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel with me. Verse 8. And it is so when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And the Bible says that the prophet heard of the rejection from the king and saying to send Naaman to me and I will recover him of his leper. The prophet asked for the opportunity to allow this leper to see that there is a God in Israel. God never puts healing, he never put healing in a person's comfort zone. Sometimes we want to be healed of our troubles right where we are. We want God to do it for us, but we want it done on our terms and not necessarily on God's terms. But if your problem serves a purpose, you have to allow God to do it on his terms. You can't want God to do it on, on your terms. God is trying to show Naaman a leopard because Naaman is thinking within himself because I'm so good as 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 the captain of the host of Assyria because I, I've been able to win so much wars. When folks hear about me, they ought to, to give me some sort of respect because I, I earned it. And after all, if I'm going to a person who has the ability to heal me, I'm not seeing what is the big issue, what is the big problem. But I stop by to tell you until we learn to be humble. God cannot work his work in us. Many times we want things done our way and we are not humble at all. But we want God to still work in us in a big way. So the Bible is showing us here how her problem serves a proof. Uh, Naaman has been told by Elisha to go and dip in Jordan seven times and you would receive healing. Out of all the rivers of Damascus, the Bible says that Naaman did not even come out and meet. In fact, Elijah did not even come out and meet Elijah. Uh, meet uh, Naaman. He came out, he sent one of his maids out and told him to go dip seven times. But Naaman was so mad with himself. Naaman saying to himself, this guy really know who I am. To go and dip in this nasty water and it have all these nice rivers of Damascus and the man chose the worst water for me to go in and turned away and walked off with his leper. He wanted to be healed but he wanted the man to come out and wave his hands all over the place so that his leper would go and he would be healed. But that is what he wanted. God wanted him to be humble enough to go into the dirty water of Damascus and dip seven times. Naaman, sick as a leper, turned away from the chance of being healed and when he turned away, he went in a rage because he said, this guy, this guy is going to be crazy. He wants me to go dip in that nasty water of Damascus to get healed. He could have just come out and waved his hand so that I would be healed. He was not humble. And when you are not humble, you can't receive healing. When you want to deal with your issues the way you want to deal with it, you just go ahead and deal with it. If you think that you can solve your own problems, then you don't need God. Yeah. Naaman thought that this is what, and sometimes what you thought is not necessarily what has to happen. 
It's just a thought that you have, but the Bible is saying that you've got to dip seven times if you want that sickness to leave you. Many times we have problems and we want to deal with our problems, but we want to deal with it our way. And even if that we're not getting satisfaction, as was mentioned this morning, sometimes some Christian leaves the comfort of God, leaves the comfort of the church, and they go down, maybe somebody's doing me something wrong, I need to go down to uh, point 14 and go by Mother Cornox or go by somebody who can see what I'm going to or go by this lady who has the crystal ball so she can tell me what's going on in my future what is happening with me did somebody do me something that I need and they're going all out only to realize that the place that they left is the only place that they can have the right reward and the right uh, results but yet still you're going to some man so that he can tell you what is your future that's why we don't play that's why we don't play that's why we don't look at the signs and things so the signs of the stars and so on to tell us what is going to happen in the future so this woman this man that is called uh Naaman, decided that he would not take this man on because he's crazy but thank god because the little maid that was held captive the little maid said my lord if this guy had asked you to do something great would you have not have done it and that brought Naaman to his right sense and he said within himself you know she could be right the name made its purpose was to help Naaman to see that he needs to be humble enough to the man of God so that he can receive healing Sometimes the word of God is the one that is used to instruct us in ways that we can get help, but many of the times we look for our own remedy and we are misled. We need to stay with what God is saying because God made us, God knows us from the beginning, even before we were born, God knows us. The prayer that we are now praying, he heard that prayer long before you came on this side. He has the answer long before the answer comes. Why is it that we don't want to trust God as we ought to? We want to depend on ourselves, but by ourselves we are nothing. We cannot help ourselves to get rid of the issues and problems that we have, but we need to depend on a God who is omniscient a God who knows from beforehand all that is going to take place in your life and in my life so here it is Naaman is standing by the water he has a change of mind and he is coming back by the water he's looking at the water and he is saying that I really want to get healed so he goes down into the water and in going down into the muddy stinking water he has a chorus that is singing on the side of his brain telling him you are the captain of the host of Assyria and you are allowing this man to make you go down in this nasty water an embarrassment why are you going down in that water Naaman you need to get out of that nasty water so while he is doing what God wants him to do to the prophet he has someone who is trying to discourage him how many times when we are trying to do what God wants us to do we have someone on the side trying to discourage we always have somebody who think they know better than God somebody who think they have all of the answers you mention something and somebody in the audience have an answer for what you're going through but I stop by to tell you that you need to pay attention to the Word of God because God is always right and because he's always right in due time you are going to have what you are supposed to have if you have patience be humble and wait on God Naaman went down into the water he dipped one time and he came up sick he dipped two times and he still came up sick he dipped three times came up six four times came up sicker and then someone is telling him you see you have 
have to be foolish. At least by now you ought to see some signs of something clearing up. But apparently it's getting worse. You need to get out of that water. But Naaman still has three more dips. So he went down the fifth time. Came up, still sick. Six times. And by now the devil is actually trying to say, I don't have no time with you. You're too hard. And I'm telling you, you are wasting time. For and you know, sometimes that's what happened because the remedy is right among your brethren and your sisters and the devil is telling you wasting time going up to those people up there you see you're not getting no results these people just going but they don't have no god i'm saying that you're just wasting your time you just live your life everybody's living their life and enjoying themselves the boy likes you so much but you boss in style you think you can get somebody better than him you need to relax yourself and don't pay attention to this church, church, church folks. Because all you're going to get is church, church. You're going to come out churchy. You need to stop this church, church thing and start to get a life and get with the time. Because this is how we do it in the 21st century. In the 21st century, this is how we do it. You don't have to depend on people to tell you what to do. I'm saying that the world is out there. You've seen the flickery lights. You've seen all that is happening. You've seen all the avenues where you can excel. But you're telling me about church, church, church. You're boring. You're boring. I, sometimes I stress myself trying to talk to you because you're boring. You're not listening. You're too hard. And then sometimes you give in to the temptation and we don't see you no one sister came to me and she had some issues with her foot she had gone to the Trinidad School of Preaching she spent two years came out of the school and then she has an issue with one of her foot not getting better she had gone by invitation to a place that they would pray for her And they did pray for her and after the prayer she said that she started seeing results she said my foot actually starts to look different you know that reminds me of one time when I was much younger I was at the standpipe bathing not bathing but I was washing my car and while washing my car well, in fact I was bathing by the standpipe <laughs> And while bathing by the standpipe with this guy riding his bicycle. And in riding in his, his bicycle, he ran straight into my car and fell down. Now, he was crippled, but he was riding his bike. And for some reason, he ran into the vehicle, couldn't even get up. But I was so annoyed. And if you know me with vehicle, long time when you do that with my vehicle, I am mad. I'm really, really, really mad. And I ran up to him, but he's crippled, so I can't do him anything. And then he looked at me in the face and he said, Brother Joy, he said, I went to a healing program yesterday. And I am healed. And now I am more mad. <laughs> because he's like this. And he said, now I'm healed. <laughs> And I'm not, not, not making fun of anybody. What I'm saying is, why is he saying that he's healed? I was so mad. I said, if you are healed, you look like this. <laughs> you are not healed. But whatever they told you that sounds good, that works on your mind, you think in your mind that you're healed, but you're not healed. You still need Jesus. Some people are looking for literal healing, but I'm saying if you die with your situation and you die faithful, you will find Jesus. 
You don't necessarily have to have physical healing on this side. If you don't believe me, ask Paul. Paul said, I pray to God that you will take this stone from me. And he prayed three times and Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. You don't always have to receive physical healing. And I'm saying that and sometimes when you believe the very set thing happens to you and you want to know why me and I'm asking you why not you because God wants to boast a little bit because I have individuals who are faithful in spite of what happens. They are going to remain faithful. So the Bible tells us that Naaman had gone down six times. And when he had gone the seventh time the Bible says he came up and his skin was as smooth as mine. I mean, as just... <laughs> After the, he saw that, no, many of the times, that is exactly where preachers normally stop. But I stop by to tell you that Naaman's issue was not necessarily about Naaman. The maid problem being captive was not necessarily about the maid either you see the assyrian people were idolaters they love to worship idol and because the assyrian are so much in love with naaman god took naaman and made him so sick so that the assyrian people could see what god is about to do when Naaman got better. Naaman said that I need to find the God of Israel. He went and he got himself to Lam. And he went back to Syria and offered to Lam in Syria and brought back Israel worship in Syria. So the people in Syria now, because of what has transpired with Naaman, is able to call on the true and living God. It's exactly what God wants us to do. Sometimes Naaman's leprosy was to help Syria recognize that there is still a God in Israel. The leprosy, the captive or the maid that was held captive, was to point Naaman to the person who is able to heal. So what problem solved Naaman's purpose and Naaman's purpose solves the purpose of those people who likes to worship idol. I stopped by to tell you this morning or tonight that Luke John chapter number 11 when Jesus Christ was with his disciples that Mary and they said your friend Lazarus is sick Jesus is saying to the disciples that Lazarus is sick he says but I will not go yet I will go but I will not go right away to the point where he delayed for about approximately two three days where he was and while he is going to where Lazarus was, he is healing people on the way and doing all sorts of things on the way. But I stop by to show you that Lazarus' problem and Mary's problem served a purpose. Because when Jesus did decide to go, he said to his disciples, Lazarus is dead. They said, well, if Lazarus is dead, why is his son going? He's dead already. And Jesus said, let's just go. And he went across. And when he went across, Mary and they saw him and they ran to him and said, that, if only you were here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. Jesus said, do you believe that he's going to rise again? He said, yes, I believe in the resurrection he's going to come again. But if you were here, he would have been still alive.